Welcome back everybody. Most probably you're here to learn uh, how to cut the sailor collar. That's what I'm going to do for you. The sailor collar looks like this. As you can see, it has a V-neck drop and at the back it hangs as a cape. We're going to draft it similar way to the Peter Pan collar if you watched that video before the sailor collar. It has an overlap at the shoulder tip, half an inch and then the neckline is dropped. So when the pattern is made, it looks like this. The under collar is going to cut eighth of an inch lesser. And later, we're going to also cut the bodice with the very same neckline drop. So when we sew them together, we come up with the garment that you have seen on the previous picture. And at the, at the very end, we're going to learn how to do button, button extension for this kind of structures. I'm going to draw the straight line, which is going to represent my center front. And I will put my front, center front line, right on this line that I've drafted. And I'm going to copy the neckline and shoulder. After copying the front neckline with the shoulder, I'm going to measure half an inch down from the shoulder because I'm going to overlap the front and back shoulder tips. But the neckline of the shoulder stays really on the neckline shoulder of the front. Meanwhile, I'm going to turn the back pattern and bring and put it right next to a half an inch. So if you look under, you can see that my shoulder is overlapping my front shoulder for half an inch. Why half an inch? Because I want to get very, very tiny little stand at the neckline, which usually measures one eighth of an inch. Once I do the overlap, I will copy the back neck and I'm going to copy the center back line. So after I copied the back neckline, then I drafted long center back because on the center back I am going to have a um, long collar um, hanging at the back. For low cut necklines, we need to decide how much skin we want to show at the neck. Let's say for my uh, sailor collar, I'm going to do six inches drop. You see six inches at the cleavage. So you decide how far down you want, you want to go, it's up to you. We're going to do six inch drop, so we come up with six inch V-neck where our collar is going to be connected. Okay, here at the front, I'm going to drop my neckline for six inches. And that line is going to, that point is going to be connected to the shoulder neckline point with a straight line. So that's my neckline. Now, um, at the back, we're going to drop down for eighth of an inch of the center back. That's what we do for Peter Pan collars as well. Like this, so this drop is one eighth of an inch. So my intention is to bring that straight line, this is 90 degree. I'm going to bring it, blend it with this V that I came up with. So I'm going to do that with my French curve. You see I catch that about one inch straight line and smooth, smooth it out to the shoulder. So that's my neckline. Now I'm going to decide the hang of the collar at the back. Most probably eight inches will look right. We don't want it to be too long, neither too short. Also, I have to decide the width of that cape that is going to hang at the back, which could be, let's say 14 inches, divided by two will be seven. So we're going to drop eight, eight inches, over seven inch and then the collar is going to be broad and connected to the front so we can come up with the center collar. Here from the neckline I'm measuring eight inches and I place my one of the ruler lines matching with my center back and I draft a straight line. That line as I mentioned before is going to be seven inches long. So this is eight inches and this is seven inches. Now, the seven inch point is going to be connected to the center front point. 
right like this. So that's my color. I want to come up with a mirroring image of this half a color to the other side of my paper. Therefore, I'm going to fold at the center back. And after stapling, I want to add my seam allowances. Again, as always, colors get quarter inch seam allowance all around at the edges and at the neckline alike. Keep the center back 90 degree, please. And smooth out the neckline curve. Now, um, I need uh, an under color for this one. Therefore, I'm going to place another piece of paper underneath so I can cut my under color at the same time I cut my top color. So this is going to be my top color. For the under color, I'm going to prepare a piece of paper where I place my center back straight line, which is going to be my future grain line, on the paper and fold on this line. And let's place it right under the top collar where the center backs are precisely matching with each other. And let's staple them together. Now we're ready to cut. that enough I added a piece in here in case that happens with you too you can definitely add a little swatch of paper for the corners to match there okay so let's place this on the form and see how it looks silver color on the form where you can see the neck drop six inches neck drop and you can see a little stand little jump eighth of an inch in here that's because of our drop down and you can see the drop of the back and the width of the back so when it's sewn it is going to look like this minus the seam allowances obviously so now let's draw drop the um, the other color, finish the neck under color, and then draft the bodies that goes with this kind of neckline. Okay, um, we're going to cut under the under color for eighth of an inch shorts, small, because again, we want to pull the top color towards the under color and hide the seam. I want you to cut eighth of an inch straight from one corner to another corner here, eighth of an inch, and from here to the center front, it is going to be gradual drop from eighth of an inch to zero. So that's gonna go to the corner to zero. Okay, so this becomes zero in here. So we cut again eighth of an inch straight. I 
the center back and from center back to the center front it is going to go from eighth of an inch to zero Here you see the the, the under color is eighth of an inch shorter and eighth of an inch in here going to zero at the center front. So let's mark them. This is my grain line, and the same will happen on the under color and um, the notches. Let's put them again on top of each other and mark the shoulder notch, which is coming for both pieces, like that, precisely on top of each other. And notch the shoulder. Okay, they share this notch at the shoulder. Then the center back of the top collar is going to get a single notch. We can put a single notch in here too, so when we stitch this long line, we exactly know that they're matching. At the back, at the neckline, we do a quarter inch notch, which, when opened, gives us a double notch, half an inch away, and one single notch that is going to match with this center back notch right there. Okay, so let's label the patterns. So this is my sailor collar, top collar, actually size eight and cut one. And the top collar usually is fused. with fusible interlining and this one is going to be my sailor under color size 8 cut 1 I'm copying my front bodice to actually design the same neckline for um, as I designed for my sailor color so we all can understand that once you change the neckline shape, then you have to change the neckline of your garment also. So when you sew them together, they would work. Don't forget to mark your dart point. Now, um, so here, I dropped the neckline of the sailor collar for six inches, and I'm doing the same exact thing right here. And I am going to draft the, that six inch point to the shoulder neck point, just the same exact way. Um, then I am going to draft my dart. I shouldn't forget my dart. And now before I finish and add seam allowances, I also understand that if I have a collar that has front opening, the front is open. Then I am going to have some sort of closure. Let's say that closure is buttons. I'm planning to put buttons at the front. So then for buttons, we need to add some extension. As you can see on this draft, this line is the center front line. The buttons usually are stitched right on that line. The horizontal buttonholes are starting from that line too. So this is my center front line. Now you can see that there is extra measurement in here, which is called button and buttonhole extension. This is called button and buttonhole extension. You can read on this page if you have the um, this uh, pattern making book, Armstrong's book. And let's add that also on our pattern. Now I'm going to add my extension from the center front. So this is my center front. I know that my buttons are going to be sitting on this line. Buttons. Okay, so 
buttons, but I cannot stitch the button on the edge of the fabric. I have to have some extra fabric continuing from that point so I can stitch my buttons on the center front line. So when I button up my garment, they're lined up right at the middle of my body. Now, um, so then how much do I add? The, the amount of the button extension, button extension, Okay, so I, that's what I'm deciding right now. It's going to be equal to my button diameter. Okay, so whatever the, the button is, so this is the diameter, that the diameter is um, equal to my extension. So, if I look at these different buttons that I have, they are all um, in different sizes and they have different diameter measurements you see i have like half inch one and then bigger ones and even biggest ones that will be more appropriate for coats and jackets blazers okay let's assume my button is um five eighths of, eighth of an inch diameter okay so i measured the diameter then i would know how much the button is if my button is five eighths of an inch diameter then my button extension is going to be five eighths of an inch also. So this would be my button extension. Okay, but after the but button extension, I need some fabric that folds down under like this to be stitched in here because I cannot cut right at the edge. I have to continue the fabric. So from this point, I'm going to have an underfold which is usually double of this measurement. Okay, since this was 5 eighths of an inch, the button extension was 5 eighths of an inch, then the underfold is going to be inch and a quarter. Okay, and so I have my extension, my underfold, and be, before I finalize, I also, I'm going to need some seam allowance in here. Let's say add it, half an inch seam allowance. Now let me fold it so it, it is clear for you. Here, we measure, uh, we fold, sorry, half an inch like this, and then uh, we may also fold the underfold. Now look. If I'm going to stitch my button right there, you see, that's a little too big for my measurement. Let's say this one is going to be stitched right at the center front. And you can see that I have enough fabric that I fold it under the button to be stitched in here. Also a seam allowance that will make my garment finished at this edge. So after I measure those and fold it in the place, now I can um, measure my seam allowance at the neckline which is quarter of an inch and half an inch at the shoulder let's say if we want to add sleeves on our garments we do half inch seam allowance at the, the armhole and half an inch at the sides now when the front is folded, I keep it folded like that and I'm going to cut the neckline. I'm going to come up with this very funny fold, but um, I need it to stitch my collar in the place. In order for this to make sense to you, let's imagine I'm sewing my collar to the body's neckline. I put the shoulder notch to the shoulder seam like this and it comes down to the neckline like this and I am going to place this facing this way so I can conceal the collar and So when we fold this under, 
course it's a paper it doesn't follow properly but most probably you will get the point so then this is going to be folded like this you see how how your color got will be concealed like that um, inside of it so but the problem with this particular style is that the upper part of my collar is not going to be concealed um, underneath. Of course, there are different ways of sewing this, so it, it is concealed. But at this point, I would like to extend this a little bit further and come up with a special facing for this. So when you stitch and fold, everything is cleanly finished. Now, let's take a look at this extension that I came up. What I can do, this underfold can be separated as a separate piece that will be not stopping right here, but will go all the way to the neckline so we can conceal and finish everything properly. Here's what I can do. Here where I have the buttonhole extension, I will move the seam allowance to here, meaning after button extension, I'm going to have quarter inch or half an inch seam allowance, it's up to you. You can do both, okay? So let's say here I have half an inch seam allowance and I cut the underfold because I'm going, actually let's do it quarter inch. Okay, so quarter inch to go with the neckline quarter inch seam allowance, okay? So um, if this is quarter inch, now you see I have to create something that will replace this underfold. Here's what I would do. Okay, so here I have my center front where the buttons are going to be stitched and button extension and quarter inch seam allowance. Here's what I do. I need another piece of paper for my facing. So I'm creating a facing for this edge. Facing is a small piece of fabric that is always fused and always hiding inside of the garment as a supporting piece. In this case, my facing is go going to be created to support my uh, sailor collar. So what am I going to do is, I'm going to cut my facing exactly the same measurement that my pattern edges. You can, you can trace this or you can very carefully cut so you're not shaving off your pattern. You can trace first with the pencil, then cut. Okay, so here, facings are usually one an inch and a quarter, one inch and a half, one inch and three quarter wide, usually. Meaning, if I was drafting my facing on this, let's assume I draft my facing right on the edge. I can draft it, then put the paper underneath to cut or you can put the paper and cut and then drop the facing. You see, I'm going to create this strip of fabric that is going to be precisely matching to the front shape. And that shape can be anything, can be a square neck, can be round neck, can be sweetheart shape, can be V neck, anything you want. So with my um, tracing wheel, I am going to trace this line or I can draft it and the piece that is under after I remove the staples. You can do whichever way you want to. And after removing staples, you will see that, you see you have the facing edge that is precisely cut according to the pattern. And um, I'm not sure if you can see my needle marks on the paper. I am just following my needle marks or else I could measure that inch and three quarter um, right measuring by measuring from the edge of the pattern and so that's my facing. One thing that I should not forget, the facings will be a little bit smaller on the edge here, eighth of an inch. I'm going to cut eighth of an inch from here, eighth of an inch to zero. Usually because the facing is sitting inside of it under the garment. It is cut slightly small so it doesn't bulge out. So then I we're going to cut this 
and we're going to remove that eighth of an inch. So that's my facing that is precisely matching to the center front of my garment. You see, this is that piece that is going to help me to stitch my collar um, in the place. So let's say if I am going to stitch my collar back again, because I didn't like the way it was finishing on the first time, here's what I would do. Can you see my collar is right sandwiched between my bodice and my facing, like that. If I'm stitching this in the place, I will be stitching all three pieces together, pin them first and stitch along the neckline. You don't need to pin the patterns or anything. I'm just pinning so you can make sense of what's happening in here. Okay, so you see like then this piece is going to be overlocked on the edge and folded under and finish up the collar like that. So from inside, it's clean and this will be going down all the way down like this. Can you see that facing that was matching to my center front by its shape? It is helping me to stitch my garment with a finished edge right there. Again, this piece, the facing that is hiding underneath, in order to be able to hold my neckline in the place and together, I have to fuse it, okay? So then let's assume this garment is finished. I'm going to be placing my buttons in there and, um, and finish it. So as you can see, my first button is going to go right here at the break point. And then I'm going to place my last button a little bit above the waistline. And then I can divide this section into as many sections as I want to, evenly divide it. So then I can stitch my buttons in the place. You see, my buttons are going to be stitched right here. Since my buttons are going to be stitched at the center front, if my buttons are small, I can come up with buttonholes that are going to be eighth of an inch longer than my button diameter. So this will be my buttonhole measurement. Okay, so I would be placing his the button, but these are the button hole length and the same way like this. Okay, so my buttonhole is going to be right there. And now let me finish my patterns. We said that for small buttons, we do vertical buttonholes. Again, let's say if I stitch my button here, my buttonhole will be from here to here. You see, that's my buttonhole. Now, what's what's happening when my button is big? When my button is big, I cannot place my buttonholes on vertical position. I have to change the position to horizontal. Why? Because if the buttonhole is big and on vertical position and you button your button, it stretches the buttonhole open. Therefore, we switch it to the horizontal position. Let's say if my button was big, say eighth of an inch bigger than this button, I will be measuring and I will pass from the button point eighth of an inch out, right there a little bit, pass, pass out over and then draft your straight line and then this is the end of my buttonhole. So again, on this position, it will be, if this is my button base, then my buttonhole end is here and the other end is here. So choose the buttonhole type that you need for your chosen button sizes. So for these two pieces, I'm going to make my grain lines and a grain line for this small piece that usually follows the mother piece. And I am going to um, mark my buttonholes, button buttonholes with, with, with a punch hole mark and punch a circle, punch a circle. And um, for the dart, I will go half an inch down, punch hole circle, 
then I'm going to place my notches, let's say for the simulance fold, center front point, the dark leg, the other dark leg, my side seam up and down notch, here is my upper notch, and my armhole notch, shoulder tip, so notches are done for this piece. And on this uh, the other one, we don't have the those marks. We just um, label them. So this will be my front bodice for sailor color for sailor color and size eight, cut two. And this one is facing. for sailor color, size 8, cut 2, and this is definitely fused. So that will conclude my demonstration for you for the sailor color, for the bodies to match with it, and the facing Five, to go. Four, three. I'm going to make... Uh, so, sorry, no, it's... I'm going to be making more videos of uh, pattern drafting. If you like my presentations, you can like and subscribe. Uh, also, you can go to my jasminegstudio.com for a thorough instruction of draping. See you next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Sophie Kachwani.